All right, everybody, welcome to Answer the Call. This episode is with the Nubifier. Uh, you guys know him very well. If you are watching this on YouTube, I'm sure. Um, but for those of you that don't know what Answer the Call is, it is a short firm form podcast that is with only one guest or one caller at a time with one topic only. I think most of the Star System podcasts are really long form, really long winded, um, and very different from this. So I thought that this would be a really cool idea, something really fun to do. And so far, I I've never had so many positive comments on anything I've ever done in anything as far as Star Citizen content creation goes. So I'm really happy with the feedback so far, and uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. So the topic today is, can Star Citizen be balanced? Now, that doesn't just mean combat balance, economy balance. I'm talking about overall, given the scope of the game and how it's been developed, how it's been funded, all the, the factors of Star Citizen, can it be balanced? Um, and me and Noob discuss this a little bit off camera just to see if it would be a good discussion, and I would have changed the topic if we agreed completely on things and, and we don't completely agree. So uh, it should be pretty good. But before we get started, for those of you who may not know you, Noob, um, even though you do have lots of followers on Twitch, even though you've never streamed on Twitch, <laughs> like for those of you that don't know you, since we are live streaming on Twitch as well, who are you? What do you do? Tell people about All you. Right. So hello, everyone. Those of you that don't know me, I'm the Nubifier. I am a redacted Star Citizen content creator. I am trying to branch out a little bit, uh, but it's a it's a bumpy road. We're going to try to do some hardware and stuff like that in the future. So if you see those, support them. If you don't like it, let me know. I'll change it. Um, I basically try to take Star Citizen and make it uh, acceptable or easy to understand for people in as short as possible. I don't normally go for the, the big ticket items as far as the content. I also like to pick a weird thing. Like last week I did something about the coordinate system and how complicated it would be to define a coordinate system in space. So if you are interested about that, please go have a look at that or look for that video. It has a big globe on it. It's very difficult to miss. But that's uh, that's the kind of thing. I take things that interest me, and it sounds very personal, but I take things that are interesting to me and I make videos about them because ultimately you want to make something that you're happy with or that you want to do, right? So exactly. that's why that's why I do that. So uh, if you like that, if you want to be along for that ride, please subscribe. Nice. Um, yeah, so I usually start the podcast off with my feelings on it. Um, so do I think Star Citizen can be balanced? I want I want to start with the the first first things first. The I guess the elephant in the room and the reason why I have my opinion is the ship purchasing and how long we've been able to buy ships to fund the game and concept ships um, and things like that. The fact that it's been going on for so long and people have been um, buying ships for, what, five years now, I think? Um, six? 2012 to 2018? Yeah, and it's 12 a year yeah. right now. Yeah, so they're doing one every month. And what... The trend that we're also seeing is uh, there's similar style or types of ships that are coming out from ships that they put out in the past um, that when the new one comes out, it does tend to seem better and be, be better than the one that they made before. Okay, um, But I think we should define balance. Uh, balance for me is a number of factors. I think we should define balance in combat. For, and I think we might have a different opinion of what balance is as well, uh, potentially. Uh, balance for me is not it is is creating an atmosphere where you're not where one person or one type of ship isn't used all the time because it's massively overpowered. Not one build on one ship. Yeah, yeah. The, there's there there'll be a good meta where when you come to when you come to a fight where you do a mission that there's multiple options to do them as far as combat goes right so there's no one like if you want to do x you have to buy this ship this 
shield, this uh, weapons, and that's the best thing by far. There will always no. be something maybe that's slightly better or whatever, but then you're talking about like really min maxi type stuff, which I think is acceptable, right? There should be a lot of metas, different, yeah, exactly. different metas for what you want to do. Yes. So with that, I think we agree. Okay, cool. Then as far as the economy goes, and for those of you that don't watch the Astro Pub and um, the Captain's Table, they actually discussed this on their podcast last night, and I thought it was a really, really interesting discussion because there was a couple people who were like really in, into econ uh, economics. One of them had, was an economics major or master, um, had a master's degree in it, and they discussed a bit about it. Uh, the economy, I think, will be a lot easier to balance. Uh, because of the the nine NPCs to one player, how they're going right. to do that exactly, I think we can discuss that. Even though we haven't discussed this much um, or at all uh, previous to this podcast, I don't think. Um, but uh, the economy balance would be that you know, Laranite isn't the only ore that you should be grabbing, um, and I think economy right. balance will come more with multiple systems and, and things like that, right? Tony Tony talked a lot about it on a yeah. uh, sitcom panel and he did it like he's sp spoken about broadly, it but he did. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to hear him speak about it again and again, just to, not that, not that I think he's going to, you know, lie and change something, but that his vision about it is what we thought about it. Even from 2013, when he first started to talk about it, like, so yes, if you, if a bunch of us do a bunch of things the same, then the economy would compensate for it. And you're right. I think the NPCs uh, and game master injects would be specifically how they might deal with it. Yeah. Not not to prevent you, not to prevent something like a large organization from having influence, but to make it more and more challenging for them to imbalance the universe and make it difficult for other people to play, right? Checks and balances. Did you I play think Eve? Is... No, but Neither I've been did watching... I. I've been watching uh, some of my org mates do play it, and I've been watching uh, other streamers play it in that lull between patches because that's what they're playing. So I, I know that game is brutal, and I think that a lot of people that like Eve saw in Star Citizen something that they like in Eve. And I, again, we can't get... I'm not going to get off on the rails here, mm -hmm. but the game won't appeal. It can't appeal to everyone. Obviously, that's the intent. No. And there's a lot of people that think the game is going to do something, even though nobody ever said that that's what the game is going to do. Yeah. So a certain amount of uh, disappointment, let's say. But uh, I'm I'm going to stop and let you go on with that. Sorry. Well, well, the reason I ask you is, do did you ever play Eve? Is That was a par big part of the discussion on, on the Astro Pub's podcast was they were doing a lot of comparisons to Eve and how Eve's economy is. Because Eve's economy is, uh, I guess, capitalist. It's 100% run by the players, where there's right. no like kind of s like socialism. It's classic from, sandbox. It yeah, it's a classic sandbox. sandbox. So the, the players are able to directly affect the economy. A game that I play a lot is Albion Online. And Albion Online was an interesting start where um, when the game started, when the MMO started, every single item, every single thing in the game is crafted by the players. So there was never, like at the start of the game, it was impossible to even make or gather uh, the highest level gear. You actually had right. to earn your way up to get it, right? So things in the economy built itself over time. But again, that economy is directly affected by the players. So prices and everything change all the time based on how players affect it. Um, so I do... Go, go ahead. I was just going to say that... So that in, ex, that in itself is the Eve way of doing it, to me, is part of game, is part of the game, it's, is part of the tactic. Yep. Let's say your org was... Excuse me. Let's say your org was capitalizing on aluminum in a in a sector, and I really wanted you to get out of that sector. Rather than just attack you, I could go mine aluminum somewhere else or something and then flood the market with it to make it so that you had to go further and basically make a hostile environment without physically attacking you. I could achieve a goal. Make it not worth with it. Right. I could I could upset the balance such that you are forced to make a decision. And either you come attack us 
or you leave or you continue to struggle with uh, low profit margins, right? Yeah. So I, I don't think that that the idea of the iron fist coming in and just leveling everything out is is a complete solution or something that we want. Do you right? think that that's want... what Star Citizen solution is? It sounds like it's going to be... Well, Tony specifically said that there would be a period of time where the it would be a natural progression. So let me let me see if I can remember how he how he specifically said it. Okay. Let's say my org comes in and completely imbalances the market. Let's say or let's say we start doing lots of crime. So right? you think well, you think you can for a period of time. And okay. this is this is I I distinctly remember what Tony said. So what he said is that the universe would react in an appropriate and time conscientious way. Yep. So if I came in and started doing lots of crime, the price for bounty and security would go up. Mm -hmm. That would bring not that would naturally bring players and non-players to come in and offset the amount of crime that's being done. Yep. And it's kind of the same like use that analogy for the economy. However, he didn't say it would just happen. He said that it would ramp up. If we needed uh more Laronite, let's say, an NPC corporation might put a double shift on, but they would have to go hire the people and it would take time for that that to happen, which is which is good, it's realistic, and it's a simulator. So it's always been an economy simulator, not an economy game, which is what they're trying to do. Yeah. So I do think that there will be large uh, corrections, but I don't think, I think we're going to have a couple weeks before that that happens, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So like if you... Uh, and and this is this is definitely a topic that you and I are gonna uh, agree on a bit. The 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 one reason I brought up Eve and Albion is the way those I don't know how Eve started, but the way Albion started is no, from nothing into something. Where Star Citizen starts out with uh, Star Citizen is saying these are the prices for these items. Now, do we like? I don't know if we will ab be able to. Let's let's talk about this for a second is like ship pricing now are we going to be able to directly affect ship pricing which is i think what people are more concerned about than anything you bring up the topic that i am kind of more concerned about which is the the actual um raw material market which i think is the one that matters the most yeah. and, and i'll get to that part but do like i think the people are more concerned about will we be able to affect ship pricing and i don't think I you can say, go in and say i'm selling 1000 auroras for this price maybe you could but i don't I, think, I don't envision you being able to open a ship shop do you i think it's i think it's easier so ship trade is people are going to trade whatever they whatever they can Just, yeah and they're that, likely going to go below right market value to be able to sell the ship potentially right so, but don't, I'm going to not necessarily answer your question, but I'm going to bring up a, a valid point that was also on the economy thing. I think we're basically going to focus on the Tony Z presentation today. Yeah. Um, someone commented 21 million, $22 million for a hammerhead to, is like craziness. You know, that's impossible. Yeah. But then Tony said, he showed a graph and it was like 30 things on it. It was like propulsion, shields, whatever. So the makeup, the cost of your ship, the value is a better word of your ship equals what all the components are worth in that sector at that time. Yep. So to to counter what your question was, can you change the value or price of a ship? Yes. If if that particular uh, whatever shield generator is a million dollars in that sector because nobody has one, then your ship is going to be a million dollars plus whatever whatever that is. So you could technically tank a market by flooding a market with a part, but then maybe that ship won't be the one that people are looking for. I guess what you're saying is, let's say uh, javelins are only made in a sector at a particular store, right? And Which and would likely that, be the case. Right, because it's made in a factory at a shipyard and stuff like that. So if you want to go buy one, you have to go to that location as a mission, your mini mission, and go look at what it is. And I do think that the price that that ship is going to be based on a universe modifier, something that game game master would do for balance, but I think it will be kind of hands off the reins a little bit with regards to 
how much that ship costs because it it has to make sense in re in relation to all the other components right so either they make broad stroke changes to the economy which forces the ship to sit at a right price or they go in and just hammer the price down and saying no it is 300 million dollars right yep. and that's that's what the price is so um it's interesting i again not a game developer right but i have played dnd &D and i understand how uh the idea of a gm how that person the person's goal is to make a fun and believable game. You don't just have like 52 orcs come in at once yeah. and wipe out your team, right? That's not fun. Um, and then they won't want to play with you anymore. And it's the same thing. If the GM for this game start to do that too much uh, and are too into it, then maybe uh, people will start to get pissed off and lose interest, right? Yeah. And I think the one way where we can... Uh... And the reason I ask this is I, I think the real way to affect the economy as a player, where I think the concern is, uh, I think there's a less of a concern is can the economy be balanced as far as the economy goes, um, is can can we actually affect it is really the question for uh, for will, will it be balanced? So you, you believe 100%, I believe 100% as well, but I believe yeah. you can affect it by uh, kind of what you said earlier is affecting the raw resources. Because right. even in the game now, when you're trading, when you buy and sell, you you can affect the price. It does take some time, but you can affect yeah. the price at a certain place for that raw material. So long term right. in the game, an organization, even maybe a, a couple of individuals, could in certain systems directly affect the price of ships based on you affecting the raw materials to make that ship or that component or that armor right. or whatever you or, decide that you want to affect, right? So if you, you let's say you steal a javelin, Nubifier, uh, or I steal a yep. javelin and the market is lower than I would like it to be, well, then maybe I'll, I'll leave my javelin somewhere safe and then I'll go and try and affect the price of it in another way and then say, well, this is the market for a javelin. If you want to buy it off me, this is going to be the price, you know, right. or, or sell it to, to an NPC it. for a higher price, whatever. Or you strip it and sell it for parts. Yeah, that, that too, because the cars, parts might be right? worth more. Exactly. That right. oh, that very often uh, works for yeah. cars. That's why you'll see um, a car dealership buy your car from you for more than you probably thought it was worth at the time, because right? Because they, they need they the headlights it. and the taillights and, and the door. Exactly. And it's, yeah, and they're going to sell it for more than they paid you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I think we kind of agree on that one, and I, I, think you, I think we can probably sort of agree that the economy is likely going to be balanced, and balanced pretty well. In Tony Z, we trust, right? I think he's yeah. pretty damn good. I don't think that's an issue. No. Where the issue Every is... Every time he opens his mouth, it's good. It's so. good. It's great, <laughs> you know? I think where the real issue is, is combat. And not just combat, um, you know, military ship versus military ship, uh, Hornet versus Gladius. I think it's going to be the flight model um, versus uh, of of uh, mercantile ships versus combat ships. I think it's uh, again still military ships versus military ships. I think there's going to be some issues with with uh, balance with that. Uh, the fact that racing ships are still considered infiltrators. There's there's already things that that that's, bother me a little. That's bit. already balanced though. That's that's. Those guys are going to end up in the uh, character generation screen, so don't worry about that. Well, maybe. I think I think the balance <laughs> comes more. Maybe you know. Maybe this was a topic potentially for another day, because um, I'll, I'll give my opinion. But later, I want to hear what your opinion is on combat balance. Nubifier is in the military for those of you guys that don't know, and I think he has really good insight on how these kind of things work. And th and this is where we definitely differ on our right. opinions on things but go ahead so my background is uh i spent 15 years as an armored crewman so tank driver gunner loader commander um and i've gone to bosnia as as such and of course being in that job you study your enemy you study war you study tactics and you try to get good so that's why I very much, I was drawn to Star Citizen only because of the, the not necessarily only because, but the dogfighting arena commander was very interesting. You know, like that whole idea where you could get good and you were only as good as your skill was, um, was appealing. Now, part of that is choosing your weapon, right? So war isn't fair 
and yeah. armies have an advantage uh and the, the advantage is based on their tech and how much they pay or how much they train or how much they you know what i mean you you get that return of contribution yeah so i'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent just for just for background so like take for example nato forces use night vision uh to bag baddies because the night is an advantage and the baddies don't have the money to get the night vision it's an advantage and we exploit it we exploit it because spending money on the tech is better than spending money on lives right yeah and that's better for your like your american government canadian government the population are happy when the enemy is being forced to do what we want capitulate without loss of life right so that's why people would rather cut checks than body bags so as i said winning is about the make making the enemy capit capitulate you can achieve that quickly without loss of friendly forces everyone's happy uh now in star citizen doing something dumb should put you at risk we we i hopefully we agree with that if of you course. go into a, a stupid sector with a stupid ship full of stupid whatever and you get killed whatever so not taking an escort through bad space is dumb not choosing your loadout to suit the mission is dumb and running an op unoptimized power flying blind not doing research not having backup all that is dumb and let's talk about balance then so when the vanguard came out i'm sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna harp on this one because this is a perfect example textbook vanguard was pitched 250 dollars ship fast long range death machine i basically like a really really fantastic ship that that you would want in your thing mm -hmm. and it had almost no negatives other than the cost because it was it was quick it was strong it was well armored however it's made by aegis and it's a weapon right it's not like a, a truck so it, you would expect it to do that now you have a 70 dollar 325a um and you see a vanguard you shouldn't think that you can tangle with it right because you're in a BMW and that's a tank yeah so I'm not saying that so that's that's where that's the difference between balance and fun balance is when you take the Vanguard and you make it shit here so that a 325a could technically if he was lucky or but more often than not be competitive because the idea is you don't want to invalidate the 325a in exactly. arena commander because if it was imbalanced everyone would be flying vanguards against vanguards and a guy comes in with a starter package and gets destroyed however that should happen right so what would make more sense is to take the vanguard and take it out and put it into a different category of arena commander the heavies right you have a starter arena commander and we don't have the population right now to do this but this is this is to me rather than screwing with the ships because you want the balance for the pu not for arena commander but yeah. now what's happening is all the ships are being brought into balance and equal not fair fair is expected a tank should kill a bmw right okay that's that's fair and expected but that's yes. not balanced so that's that's my um that's my stretch on it so meta arena commander they found the vanguard was being used no one was using any of their ships everyone wants everyone to be happy so they bring the vanguard down so that it's competitive and then everyone can play but people melted it because they kept bringing it down and down and down and the vanguard was made out of uh, rice crispy squares and yeah. it had like shitty power and wouldn't move anything so it was a sitting duck and then people stopped flying it yeah i, I don't know what do you think what do you think of that I, I I sort of actually agree, but I, I want to take a different take on it. I think where balance comes into play is competitive balance, meta, um, and the I think the metas should be should start becoming a group meta. And we're close we're getting close to that where we have some differing combat style ships where we have EMPs now. We have different styles of weapons than we had before. There's cannons uh, that are very different exciting. from laser repeaters, which are very different from ballistics, right? So I think the balance is more... Um, I, it's hard to talk about ship versus ship right now, which is why I was like, maybe... I just realized like in the middle of that talk that I said before that maybe this would have been a topic for another day because maybe this is a topic after the flight balance. 
because let's let's air it out now though this is good yeah we can air it out now and we can always come back to it another yeah. time after the flight right. balance and maybe i'll bring you on specifically and see what we think you know differ how, or whatever how we have progressed yeah from it right. but for for now what i'd like to see and i guess we can talk about ship versus ship is i think how you are going to be able to balance star citizen and i think they've made it incredibly hard on themselves because because of the amount of ships that are in the game and the amount of small intricacies that they're going to have to do to make this one a little better at this, but that one a little better at this. But then there's like a million different components, and most of the ships are of a similar size, can all fit the same types of components on them. So right. it's going to make it weird. So the real balance is done with weapons and weapon types and and gameplay style but so each ship though each ship though has a wide range of of power based on what you put in it right yes so there, but if you if but you, correct if you think me if i'm wrong the default loadout yeah well that's where that's where i think we have to avoid is the default loadout is never like we're talking about can we oh, balance yeah. star citizen long term so the default loadouts don't matter right no. um it's just whatever guns you can throw away exactly but so as far as like Correct me if I'm wrong, and in the YouTube comments, and, and noob or anybody in Twitch chat right now, is a saber and a hornet both have the same size components. So as far as the internal components go, can I put the same size power plant on a saber than I do a hornet? But is the difference the amount of power draw that certain that the ship is grabbing? Like that's so, where where it's tough to determine. Do the components so even really matter? Straight up, the Saber will have stealth and agility over the Hornet will have armor and a little bit less agility. But Okay, but, Ag agility, yeah. sure, but yeah. stealth comes from the components, correct? And the hull. And the hull, built, so, yeah. yeah. So that's, so the, that, okay. So straight up stock, the Saber is twice as stealthy as a hornet ghost yes because it's more modern and all that and i like the lore bit of that because the hornet's an old platform that was made to be stealth and the saber was made as a stealth fighter yes right so then one should perform better in stealth okay so now, where i'm trying to go go go, you, go 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 yeah. go 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 you no, go first i was just gonna say you could you could lower all of the signatures and power of the hornet to make it stealthy similar to a hor but uh the saber let's say but you'll never you won't be able to fight because the saber is designed to fight stealthy and the hornet can be made stealthy then you take the saber and you make it stealthy and you see so you're right there's an imbalance issue there but the saber can't ever have the amount of armor that you can put on a hornet or that the amount of armor that comes on a hornet by default yeah so that we're aware of now because we we don't we've right. not been able to buy armor yet right but even if you just go look at the statistics like this the the, the all the pages like you open uh, underneath the curtain and you look at what the game files say that hornet will take twice as much dps as a, as a saber before the wing comes off before the this comes off yeah so then it's up to the pilot to stay away from the hornet or go two to one which is another thing that we do in war we do that mutually assured destruction is unacceptable you must kill the enemy before he has a chance to damage a lot of you right so then you do economy of effort and, and all the planning and stuff like that so there's a lot more to balance i know we're talking just about ship versus ship yeah but, you, but the whole idea of know your role or groups of ships versus groups of ships right but even then the the composite comp the composition of your fleet will dictate i mean everyone's playing rts games like command and conquer right they know that this thing kills that thing and that this thing is good at killing that thing so if you approach balance rts is a balanced nightmare more than star citizen i'll say because everyone's going to find a meta for that and even something like battlefield 3 comes up with 62 guns right yeah the devs patch to patch are always modifying the balance because the community will find the meta and use it and then they're like wait we shouldn't be able to one shot kill someone with a sniper rifle from the hip we need to nerf that because everybody is killing everyone with a sniper rifle yeah. from the hip so I, I i'm not worried per se about it uh especially as long as the uh the developers continue to take our feedback 
And we have places like SC4, and we got guys like Baird who would literally rip it apart. Malagos does the same thing. Malagos yep. prints out a spreadsheet of all weapons of every patch. Right. And I use that to generate deadly loadout. All I'm doing with that is finding the most effective, the meta, the most effective tactic available for a particular thing. And in this case, most of the time I use DPS. DPS is not is not a very good stadia because if you can hit reliably then dps turns out to be good but if you're all over the place then you'd rather have one strong hit like these cannons cannon. yeah right so then i'm going to start to obviously i need to start to expand into that right and this gun at this overcharge does this you know so there's a lot more variables yeah so your your question i am concerned I agree that that the balance is is definitely going to be uh, an issue because there's so many variables. There's right? so many as, variables. Yeah. However, not that's just good. ships, but like there's so many ship variables just to start. And then, and then on the top of that, off, they pile right? it on and on and on, yeah. and make their lives so difficult. And but that's why I think this is though? an interesting question. Um, no, isn't, no, because okay. I think it if could it, create the a meta where it's never fun, where. As soon as the meta's figured out, we're, everyone's flying the same ship with the let's same components about, in the same fights, and it's just not fun. Let's talk about the Kraken, because it's topical. I've prepared sure. a little bit of an observation for that. I think so, there's there's a definitely Im, an imbalance when it comes to concept ships and ship sails. And, right. Uh, so we all agree that it's up to the it's up to the citizen to decide what ship is right for them. Don't watch the promo video and see all the lasers and shit blowing up everywhere. It's like, fuck, they just crashed into a Vanguard. It's, you know, Can it's I interrupt you, though? Yes, I please. think it's up to the citizen to decide what ship is right for them right now. Because, yeah. And you only say that because there is no game to play. The right. meta's going to decide what ship is right for what citizen in the long term. But we assume that the devs are going to make the ship like the concept documentation. But the even intent, right? but, the but even then the intent is imbalanced a lot of the time. Right. And that's and that's fair. And I'll tell you why. The Kraken against an Iterus, we don't expect it we don't expect a Kraken to survive an Iterus. I don't because it's class C parts, right? That's they said that's the most you can put into it. It's made by Drake which is scrap metal put together in such a way that it looks like a ship. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of its firepower comes from the ships, not the turrets, even though it does have a lot of turrets. Its strength comes from its ships. So your high crew overload is going to be there. Like your overhead to operate that ship effectively is going to be very, very high. Uh, so if you, put it, if you cheap out and put Mustangs all over the deck, then you have a problem. If you get some money and you outfit the thing with like... 10 vanguards as an escort then obviously it's very it's a strong ship only because of the composite fleet and you could argue the same thing you put a hammerhead and a polaris next to your kraken and it becomes a force multiplier and okay. that's the thing that i balance is also the meta isn't only about the ship it's compounded because there is more factors to consider, right? Yep. Know your enemy, know what you're going to go up against, know what you're trying to achieve, and then tailor your ship, your ship loadout, and then the composition of your fleet to achieve success, right? Overwhelming numbers or overwhelming force. So if you were, like, say, let's say one-on-one, -on -one, Van, or wrong, uh, Iteris M, I think, the one with the, the big honking yeah, cannon. Yeah, Iteris M. And, right, so what would stop, so they're both slow, so we're flying this way at Mock Chicken, just like that stupid uh, fight in the new Jedi movie, right? Where the ship is mysteriously just in a, a, a two-hour car chase. Newtonian, Idris M, now what? Right? So that Kraken has to stop. There's nothing that that ship can do to stop that amount of force. So that's the, uh, that's the thing. So it's, it is imbalanced. And on top of that, Idris has military armor, military components, blah, 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 blah. I guess what I'm saying is those people that never considered what the ship is intended for just saw new shiny, melt everything, buy new ship, yeah. and release endorphins, right? Yeah. But that that may have been the wrong choice. Of so, course. Um, because people, but, are, people, so, people are buying, like this... Shiny. I, people are buying ships with their own money 
not based off of anything else other than exactly what you said. They're they're the fact that they they want to release endorphins. This has nothing right. to do with the game when they buy these things half the time. There's right. people that are collecting. Ooh, new! Wow, it looks really cool. They're like, don't get me wrong. I thought the ship looked amazing. Do I want Beast. it? Sure, because it looks cool. Do it, does it make sense well, for anything <laughs> I want to do in the game? Not really. But the right. but I, I guess we kind of strayed off the topic Sorry. slightly. But but at yeah. the same time, I think ship concept sales and are definitely apply to the the balance factors as well because like we said earlier very often um let's look at the valkyrie right you have the valkyrie yeah. that came out and you have the the hoplite you have the um uh, there's the retaliator that also has Re a drop dropship capabilities Re redeemer redeemer and your uh to a point the genesis starliner yeah like not really all, not the same and the prowler and the prowler is the yeah. stealth one all of those have come out and right or at least have come out in concept sale and they all differ a little bit but there's definitely so ones on that you that, would use over others it's just the price that balances them i think and right and the price is kind of nobody I the price in-game price really care let's stay away from yeah, some well, actual money yeah. values because it doesn't it doesn't matter we're talking okay. about released game and then you can also add the price, the crew price, because yeah. the, for example, the hoplite has uh, seven seats in the back, a turret guy and a pilot. The pilot has a hundred percent of the weapons because the turrets kind of two size twos, not really. Colors really has useful, six seats, right? right? But it's also a Drake ship and it has no armor. Okay, so yeah. that's it's it makes a sh it makes a good utility craft and it can carry cargo, which is good, which yeah. is again know your role. But if I if I saw a bunch of guys attacking, uh, like a, a fleet with a bunch of uh, cutties, I would be like, Easy. aluminum, right? Yeah. So this is the thing, and obviously I would be in. Uh, I would have chosen a different ship. So the the one thing that I want to bring up is, as far as balance is concerned, is invalidating other ships is a is a logical thing. Right? Yes. You come out with the Mercury. The Mercury just came out. I think it's like two twenty. So it's kind of in the same price range as the the Connie Andromeda whatever but let's just say this that thing can carry cargo and it can carry a lot of cargo so even if you didn't want to do the data running you're sitting there saying connie but connie with the possibility of doing data running i don't know if i want it it's a cool ship it's new i'm going to melt my my connie and get that and i think that what's likely going to happen with the valkyrie which people shouldn't do is melt their hoplites uh and get a valkyrie straight up I like the concept. It's crazy. Yeah. The fact that it has no cargo is the only reason people aren't melting Connie's for it. Yeah. If that makes any sense. And I do think that the devs are going to cave. And if they do, they should put 50 SCU, not 500, right? Make like a little mag plate on the floor just so that the person can bring some ammo for his troops or some medical supplies for his troops so that that ship is autonomous. Don't make it so that it can ruin everything. Uh, you know, it, you can put a, a, an Ursa in it. So just to say, uh-uh, no cargo doesn't actually make sense. I know it's for balance and it's they're trying to preserve all the other ships, right? So hopefully, again, we've probably gotten off topic. Sorry. Maybe, but not really. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll rein it back in here a little bit. What, what I want to see with balance in Star Citizen, what I think is important is getting away from, I think, kind of where we are right now a little bit and start really focusing on, well, I guess I guess it's getting to where we are right now, is, is at least with the economy ships, the economy ships are all very specialized. I think the military ships should be more specialized than they are now. I think they're kind of not, maybe because the gameplay isn't there yet is, is part I'll, of the I'll issue. Agree. But I'll agree with that. Like the the light dog fighters should should have their role. The medium dog fighters should have their role. The heavy dog fighters should have their role. In the end, they're all dog fighters. The what balances them are their components, their armor, their shields, oh and their speed. I feel like. But you then you just reminded me of my biggest my biggest fail from the last year was this whole aircraft carrier based ships have no ram scoop, have no ability. That that shit. 
I, that I freaked out. Go, That'll go that because go they don't. They'll realize away. how stupid it is. Well, there's only technically two ships that can't scoop fuel. Yeah, right? and that's the Saber and the Hornet. But uh, and all the Hornet series, right? Gladius then probably. And then you got like a a Bangstang, a fifteen dollar uh, Winnebago, mysteriously has the technology that a military craft that costs a billion yeah. dollars to create that can't makes do. no sense. Fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, we're they'll, allowed to swear here, right? Yeah, we could swear. They'll they'll have to figure <laughs> they'll have to figure that one out. I I the second I saw that come out, I was like, that's yeah. the dumbest so, design like, I've Lockheed ever seen. Martin, Lockheed Martin would just go buy a bunch of bang stangs, rip the component out if it was difficult to manufacture, and somehow integrate. Figure it out into a the way. Billion dollar fighter. Yeah, because that's an advantage. Figure out a way to put it on there. Exactly. So, CIG, get rid of the stupid fuel mechanics, please. please. I don't know. It's whatever. Unbalanced. But yeah. the, uh, the, what I'd like to see more is specializations, because um, I guess we're more on the topic of combat. I'd like to see the specializations more in the combat ships, where uh, certain ships can only carry EMPs, certain ships can only... Uh, uh, maybe there's a, a new type of, like, docking collar that can break into doors or something like that right so yeah. boarding ships are boarding ships uh right. i like it uh, disabling ships are disabling ships um torpedo ships are torpedo ships right they have their their major disadvantages and their major advantages right now they all just feel like dogfighters i do think though i think that not is why maybe it feels that way to me is they just don't <sighs> It doesn't do feel like there's it, any it, difference it, it, between them. So as soon as I can take, if I could take the component off of a Saber Raven and put it like the, the EMP that's in the missile bay, and if I can put that in a Saber, then that invalidates. In my Which they shouldn't allow the that. They shouldn't, they shouldn't allow that. Yeah. And they can make it up to be like the Saber Raven has a specialized metal hull, right? Something that you couldn't change. Um, the component of the ship has to be bespoke for this shit to work. Just like the DeLorean is made out of stainless steel, it's a time travel car, but all the other cars aren't. Right? Yeah. Whatever. So that that's fairly straightforward, and I do think that that's, that that's fair. But then you get the, something like the, um, the Warlock, right? The Warlock is another EMP ship, but it doesn't, it's not a stealth EMP ship. It's just an Avenger with a big honking thing in the back. And uh, there are, you know what I mean? Like, I think that the, that the idea that know your role and ships have a specific role is very good. I like the fact that I the just don't think they have as much no of cargo. a role when when it comes to combat. Oh, I see. I don't. I don't think they're as role driven in the combat sphere as the the economy ships are. Like, so, the so prospector my... is the only ship that can mine right now. Uh, there obviously right. will be other miners going forward. Um. So as far as balance right. goes, I'll, I'll make my last point here is I'd like to see multiple ships from multiple manufacturers that are specialized and your, your choice is based off very minimal differences and the style that it looks like. Like, like NASCAR. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Right. But as far as so economy I'll ships goes, as far as light dogfighters the the differences will be minor but there'll be differences it'll 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 fit your style of combat gameplay or whatever uh like i even even so far as racing ships where you some ships pitch better than they yaw if you're more comfortable pitching when turning than yawing when turning then you'll right. go with the m50 over the uh 350r or or more likely the razor, razor. right yeah, in that yeah. case. So little little so differences they, like that is what I would like to see. I'm gonna come back at you though. Okay. We're gonna talk about two fighters. Okay. The Buccaneer and the Saber, right? You've read the documents that come with that ship, right? The the Buccaneer is basically Anakin's pod racer, a uh, 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 conglomerate of whatever. It's extremely powerful. It has very large hard points. It has very big engines. It has very good shields, but has almost no hull protection, yep. and it glows like a road flare yeah. because it's not a stealth ship, right? So that's its negative. It's like a TIE fighter 
Whereas, say, Sabre, like an F-117, it's all about t tax st strategic and getting r hit registration rather than just a shotgun blast. Yeah. Now, those ships, those ships can be balanced in exactly how I said. A Sabre should fight on the outside, whereas a, a Hornet can go in the middle and just kind of blow everything up because it can take the hits. But it it won't pitch around so it has to, you know what I mean? It's its strategy is different. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, if you took the same tactic in a bunch of different ships, and you're trying to balance that by making all the ships the same, I don't want that. I want to have to have a hornet and a saber. I don't want because... them to be. Well, no, I think there should be a hornet and a saber and a. Yeah. But but they have their. I consider those differences slight. Okay. Well, you. I'm going to sound stupid, but you're going to need to spend more time in Arena Commander. Well, no, like, no, I know they're not slight differences, but I think those okay. can be balanced and created or can be made slight where the, I mean, do you want the major differences between them like that? I want to have to choose between a scalpel and a saw. Yes. Okay. Because and and there, and there the might be situations, having... there, there would be situations that would make more sense to bring the scalpel versus the, the saw. I, I want a composite fleet. I want to have to have a, a, a group of my friends in my org have to, some like Hornet, and they want to fight like Hornet, and they get good as yeah. a Hornet jockey. And then I want to have, let's say, two guys that like Vanguard and four guys that can do Sabre. And I want all of us to know that the Sabres go after the Vanguard. The Vanguard goes in, takes the hit, the, the 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 hornet comes in from the side and pins the enemy and just punishes them while the saber's making everyone confused. Yes. That is exactly how war works, and that's the level of uh, that's the balance that I want. The imbalance. Yeah. Everything is fair, but not equal. Okay. Right. Yeah. I I mean personally, I think they have to take a. Uh, I, I'm going to make my last point. The and the and the do. I'm just going to go. Do I think they can? they can balance this game. I I don't know if there will ever be really solid competitive balance. I think there will always be a fairly broken meta, and I think it will make things difficult for them. I think they want to get into the esports realm, and I think they're biting themselves in the foot when it comes to that in terms of, at the very least, the, the spaceship combat uh, esports Part. Esports is easy to do, okay? As I said at the beginning, you have your vanguards, you have your heavies. So vanguard and uh, what was the other one? The 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 crazy one with all the guns on the top. Uh, hurricane. the hurricane, yeah. Hur hurricane versus hornet is not a fair fight. So make categories, right? Groups of ships that are similar. Um, that's that's the only way to do eSport or make it Sabre versus Sabre, Sabre versus Hornet. You, you, you know, like, you can't have okay. it all. But right? but then but then we're also talking about the PU where eSports e balance might tend to find its way into the PU um, or the PU balance might affect the eSports balance of the game. The no way, sense. Well, it's what happens in MMOs, sure. at least MMOs that I've played in, is the 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 like wow albion ultima online these things where there's pvp little mini portions of the game the the way the the devs balance for that sometimes affects the actual economy of the game or if the uh, the way they balance the economy affects the pvp of the game i i just uh, again i'll make my last point i don't think it can be balanced personally i think it's way too complicated and there's always going to be a fairly unbalanced meta i think the economy will and then you could just make your last point and then we'll we'll say goodbye my final point is war isn't fair and if you're in a war ship and you're going to choose a tank over a truck over something else they're all good at what they're supposed to do and they all have a reason for you to use them like i might take a humvee instead of a tank if i wanted to be more quiet or i might take a car instead of a humvee if i didn't want people to notice i was there i need that diversity in this game is that balance no it's not, they're not equal balance. However, fair and expected based on the role and what you expect that vehicle to do, or worse still, what you were pitched when you bought it, right? Like Vanguard. Yeah. Um, so 
I don't. Which is a whole other thing. <laughs> which is a whole other thing. So I don't. I personally don't give a shit about esports. This is okay. Well, that's another topic. If esports starts breaking the core game that we're all paying for, then it's not worth it. Right? Yeah, I it's, agree. It's, tre- I agree. it's trendy or whatever. Uh, I, I don't. I don't care. Uh, PVP Arena Commander is a fun simulator and it's a good place to learn. And it should be more or less equal to what you would expect in PU because yeah. you're right, balance should balance. But breaking a ship so that it's equal in a sphere isn't the way to do it. Yeah. Changing what ship you can bring into a particular environment is, though, like yeah. a Connie, Connie battles, but not Connie versus Hornet, for example. No, but Connie versus similar Connie from another ship company. Right. Or a composite group that equal a certain amount of points. So like a Hornet is 10 points, a Connie's worth 50 points. So you could choose to bring five Connie's in and I could choose to bring in 25 Hornets. But you but know, like, like you said, war's not fair. So when you come across Test Squadron in the PU, who's got a lot of a lot of members, um, th- there's you're, there has to be a way where- Go get friends. Yeah, well, no, it's not, it, it shouldn't always be go get friends. It, it should be the ability to strategize. So the balance, about, like balance comes yeah. into play where, okay, well, we're going to want to be a little more stealthy and, and engage a certain way. Or like somebody just said in chat, disengage. Are we going to be able to disengage? Like, no. there, like there's just all call, sorts of balance that comes into play with that too. So what you, what would you do in real life? You would turn, you would, if I was in an armored vehicle overseas and my main armament is facing forward and I came upon another tank and I didn't, I just wanted to deescalate. I might turn the con- the gun away from aim and then I would wave at them and try to reach an agreement like we need to pass okay yeah. so that's another thing you don't have to maintain posture sometimes if you come ag- come aboard test squadron maybe they don't care about combat at all maybe it's not economically useful to them you phone them and say hey can i just i'm just passing through and they're like yeah we didn't even know you were there right like so this is another another entire facet i suppose of of the pvp that you want or PVP in PU that you won't get in Arena Commander. Yeah. Because in Arena Commander, you see a vehicle and you kill it because that's what the you're whole there point. for. Yeah. Right. So that's why I say the balance is you shouldn't balance the sphere to the PU. You should go the other way. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe. Well, until current Arena Commander, I don't think you can balance for the PU because eventually. Oh, they're, they're trying. They're trying, but I don't think it makes sense because you have interdiction and things like that that will come into play at some point but yeah um i don't know so i think we kind of were in agreement but not in agreement it's it's an interesting topic where i think i think it's another topic that we've brought up that i think everybody's going to have an opinion on and i think it's a good one to talk about because of that and that's why i wanted to do it now i think maybe six months to a year from now i think we can come back to this topic and see how things have progressed, how things have changed, and and so on. Um, for sure. Yeah. So before we head out, uh, for those of you guys that are po- that popped in a little bit late, uh, this is answer the call. This was answer the call, uh, where we pick a single topic each week and discuss it. Every other week, we have a content creator on, like Nubifier, and the other the off weeks, I guess, we have the viewers, you guys, call in live on Discord. So this week is content creator week. Last week was call in week, and yeah, I'm I'm really really enjoying this again. Lots of positive positivity towards this podcast, and I'm really enjoying doing it. Uh, but before we head out, Nubifier, thank you for stopping by. Is Always there anything fine. you got going on in the right now? You got any any cool videos coming out? Any giveaways? Anything that that's going on on the channel? Right. So you want to there's def- promote? There's definitely a giveaway that's ending tonight. And it's a collaboration for my radar. You should want to support my radar anyways because they're making a cool thing. The uh, giveaways for twenty five hundred dollars with the ships. It's twenty prizes. Uh, you won't be able to have any difficulty finding it on my channel. Just look for the my radar stuff. Yeah, and I'll As link I said, it. it. Okay, thank you. And then uh, yeah, so Monster Tech. Uh, I'm always again. I'm I'm trying to expand not necessarily away from star citizen but add over star citizen mm-hmm. um and it's not it's nothing it's not that i'm not happy with star citizen it's just i want more i want a bigger challenge that's the whole reason i make youtube videos in the beginning is just to learn how to make videos better learn about audio and all that stuff so this is just natural progression 
And uh, if you don't like a particular topic that I make, you don't have to watch it. Yeah. You know, you certainly don't have to get in there and tell me that I should stick to Star Citizen and you don't know what I'm doing because that's just rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, thanks for your support, guys. I do. I do appreciate it. Oh, I love YouTube comments sometimes. They're the best. <laughs> um, and yeah, for those of you guys that don't know me, I am Torque 17 I stream mostly on twitch.tv slash Torque 17 And we do this YouTube video now weekly, hopefully, uh, as long, so long as the topics keep coming. Um, and if you guys have any topics that you would like to see us discuss or any guests that you would like to see come on in the future, Leave a comment below there or let me know in the Twitch chat. There's also a Discord channel, uh, which is linked below as well, um, that you guys can actually suggest topics there. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole channel where you can su suggest it. So um, that's kind of where we came to this topic from was I kind of combined two, two suggestions into, into this one thing. So yeah, I guess we'll, this is the end of uh, this podcast. So Noob, again, thanks for coming on. And those of you guys, on YouTube, if you like this video, please like it. Uh, if you want to watch more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And again, comment below. What are your thoughts about Star Citizen Balance? Is it possible? Is it not? Um, can it be balanced in the future? And yeah, and what topics do you want to hear in the future? All right. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.